Nice to see you. You too. I was just telling you how much I loved your movie, not because you're in <laughs> front of me, but the moment the end credit last sting happened, I wanted it to start over again. That's great. That's great. I, uh, I love something, and again, this is one of the most difficult interviews, because even beyond the last Avengers movie, there are so many things that even the mere whisper of it will blow the moment. <laughs> yeah. Suffice to say, I like the open of this movie. It's unlike any superhero opening ever. <laughs> that you, is true. I mean, for me, the challenge was to find a way to deal with the fallout of Endgame uh, and answer a lot of those unanswered questions while still maintaining the sort of fun high school tone that we had established in Homecoming. So it seemed like the, seemed like the right way to do it. My generation grew up with John Hughes, and uh, th th there's some reason that somehow this middle-aged guy got in the head of adolescents better than almost any <laughs> other filmmaker yeah. ever. And then there was a respite where we didn't have that. But with you, with the first movie and then this, I feel like you get it. What's your secret? Uh, the thing that always struck me about John Hughes' films is that he was always looking for the humanity in all of these characters, you know, whether they be high school kids or, you know, uh, middle-aged businessmen from Chicago just trying to get home for Christmas, you know, like he he gave everyone a, a really deep human side. So I just try to maintain that approach in these films and think about, you know, think about everyone as, as, as people and, um, and, and uh, try to be honest about that. It, you make the likable people sense. so likable and the <laughs> not likable people understood. Yeah, I mean, no one ever wakes up and thinks that they're a bad guy, I think. So, you know, everyone, everyone has their reasons for doing things. Even if you might not agree, it's important to at least try to maybe understand why they're doing what they do. You, no one ever goes into making a film just to make it for themselves. They probably shouldn't. You want to throw a broad net or at least serve <laughs> the audience. But at the same time, there have to be moments in this movie that are joyful for you, that are for you, preaching to you. What would those moments be? <laughs> I always try to make a movie for myself. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't ever try to pander or anything like that. Um, so you just, you, you make something that you would want to go see, you know, and that's, that's how I always think about it. Um, there are a couple moments that, that really crack me up and I still can't believe, you know, we got away with them. Um, but they're all kind of spoilers, so I can't say. <laughs> yeah, they're punchlines you, you need the audience to find for themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, you probably don't trust me enough to say it, and then I'll have it after. Having Comic Sans font in a giant Hollywood blockbuster to me feels like a pretty big, uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty big, pretty big success. That's fantastic. Uh, working with Tom again, how is this? It's great. I mean, it's really nice now that we've done two films together. I feel like we're developing this really unique shorthand where we both know what each other are thinking, uh, and it really um, you know, makes it go smoothly and makes it really fun. And then Sam Jackson on set. How I, I can't imagine how I would begin to direct this guy. <laughs> Do you just kind of have him show up? I said, um, his first day on set, I said, look, you originated this character. You are, To me, you are Nick Fury, so I'm just going to treat you like Nick Fury. And he said, good, finally, someone understands. <laughs> <laughs> Without plot spoiling, is there a moment that he's the most Nick Fury you've ever seen him in the um, movie? Uh, the most Nick Fury. Well, that's a very loaded question, I guess, especially in the context of this film. But um, there's just one, <laughs> he has one face of just like complete annoyance uh, when his little exposition speech keeps getting interrupted by the kids in the Venice hostel. And he just like looks right back at Peter and gives him just the dirtiest look I've ever seen. I that's probably the most Nick Fury moment for me. Because never, I've never seen him in that situation before. So for a fictitious shows... character, it felt pretty organic. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a masterpiece. Good to see you. Thanks, man. Thanks.